The Life Design Podcast is a place where we dive deep into important topics that touch our lives. Today, we're focusing on a subject that's crucial, yet often overlooked, and that's women's mental health. Now, last week was all about men's mental health, so in today's episode, we'll be exploring the unique challenges that women face, the societal pressures that impact their mental well-being, and even the steps that each and every one of us can take toward empowerment, towards healing for the women that we know that struggle with mental health concerns and for the loved ones who so desperately want to help them. If this is a topic that touches your life or your heart, please join us for the full episode now and join us every week on the Life Design Podcast, including our Mental Health Mondays series. You can listen on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, and iHeart. We'll see you there. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe now so you can join us on every episode. We truly appreciate it. And be sure to engage in the comment section of your favorite platform for your chance to be invited as a guest on one of our episodes. Welcome back to the Life Design Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Borland, aka Coach Michael. Today's topic of mental health for women is going to call out the good and the bad from all sides of the spectrum, just like we did last week regarding men's mental health. Our society has long held expectations and roles for women, but what impact does that have on their mental health in today's world? Studies like those from the World Health Organization reveal a startling link between societal pressures, and the increased rates of mental health conditions among women. For instance, women are, more, are uh, nearly twice as likely to experience depression as men. And, and often that's, that's due to factors like gender-based violence, uh, socioeconomic conditions, and the immense pressure of balancing work and family life. And though, yes, these things affect men as well, the social norms not only shape women's experiences differently, but also their responses to stress and to trauma. So let's delve deeper and talk about some specific mental health challenges that are prevalent among women. For one, the National Institute of Mental Health reports that women have higher rates of anxiety. And then there's conditions like postpartum depression. Okay, these further highlight the specific nature of some mental health issues specific to women. Right? Men have certain uh, mental health challenges that are more prevalent to them. And women have some that are more, more prevalent um, in their experience. But it's not just about prevalence. It's also about how these conditions manifest and, and how they're addressed when it comes to women. As an example, eating disorders. Eating disorders affect women at a significantly higher rate than they do men. And it's often linked to social standards uh, such as, you know, beauty and body image. And <laughs> Look, let me be clear on this, okay? What, what, there's one thing that's, there's a couple of things I should say that are important in this. Number one, if you don't think that men experience challenges and mental health concerns based on, we'll call appearance, based on, we can call it beauty, but, but based on being handsome, based on body image, if, if you don't think that happens, you're out of your mind, Okay. <laughs> It does, and, and, it's, and it's harsh, but it's different. It is different. One of the other things that's super important to point out in this, and that is the prevalence of shaming that women receive from other women, particularly in these areas, D despite the clear need Many women face barriers in seeking mental health support. And this is an area where, where what 
uh, one area where that comes into play. Matter of fact, there was a study in the Journal of Women's Health. And it found that factors like stigma, um, caregiving responsibilities was one, uh, perceived lack of resources. Okay, these were three things that were very high on the list that hinder access to care. And, and it's the same with men. If you listened, if you remember from last week, a, a lot of similarities, but this is compounded by internalized stigmas. Okay. Where women may feel guilty or inadequate for not coping well enough. And, and though these factors specifically, um, you know, internal stigmas and, and feeling guilty or inadequate. If you go search for mental health, even though those are more often attributed as barriers to men, they are mutual barriers and, and they lead to negative cycles that all of us need to break. So ladies, if you're, if you somehow feel guilty or inadequate that you're not coping with things better because you know there is this side of it that says you know women are so tough in this area that, that they handle the kids and the home and and the job and all these other things okay if you're feeling that you are somehow falling short because you see your friends handling it you know well or other people handling it well and for some reason you're not at the moment or haven't for a while don't fall into that trap. Okay. Don't fall into that, that, um, what is the word I'm working for again? I just used it. That stigma. Thank you. <laughs> that stigma. Reach out, reach out for the help. Okay. You do not have to do that on your own. Okay. Now let me, let me say this with all that said, it's not all grim. It's not all hyper negative. There are literally millions of success stories and, and positive changes that are occurring every year. Okay. I, I'm, I'm extremely inspired by some of the stories that, that I've come across of women who've overcome these barriers, who have found this, this new level of strength or resilience within whatever their personal journey is taking them through. We hear it. We, we used to hear it a lot of, of women from, you know, decades ago, but there are so many occurring in today's day and age. There's also campaigns. There are initiatives. There are things that are spoke focused specifically for women's health. And these things are making waves. They're creating platforms and, and places where discussions and support are growing, be it podcasts like this one. Okay. This is one of the keys that I want to create with this podcast. And there are others out there, but I, I want a part of this podcast to support specifically women. Cause I think Women need that from the man's side of things. And, and there are many of us out there doing that. Many men that are out there willing to specifically to create support for women. I also want to specifically support the men's side of things because men need that as well. And sometimes women feel more comfortable with women and men feel more comfortable with men. I got, got to tell you, it's one thing to get kind of beat up from a guy saying, you know, what, you know, sissy, you know, you, you, you can't handle that on your own, but to hear for a man to hear that from a woman, it's way worse. Okay. I have, I have spoke to the most masculine stoic type of man and I, to, to the most sensitive, okay. To the, to the least masculine. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. It is harder for them to hear it from a woman than it is from a man in, I would, I would venture to say the numbers would be in the 90% range. That being said for women, 
in my experience and in some of the studies I've come across, it, it falls into an equal ratio because women are, are, you're much more social in that way with other women. So when, and yes, we can all get hard. We can all get that, that fighting attitude and I don't care what you say and you're just jealous and all this other stuff. But you know what, women, you really do have a certain type of power in what you say to other women and what you say to men and how you treat them. Now, addressing mental health care is a growing movement. Okay, let me, let me digress and come back to it's not all grim. Um, it is a growing movement. And, and it's one that it champions or that really promotes the, the mental well-being of, of women in all their diversity, in all their complexity. But that statement right there leads me to another part of this conversation that, quite frankly, it's more recent and it is highly polarizing. Okay, it's an area that has caused an increase in the challenges faced by women. And I am referring to the massive increase in the numbers and the voices within the trans community. Now, let me be clear. We are not going to debate the opinions or the viewpoints of this subject in today's episode. That is not going to happen. But in good conscience, in good conscience, <laughs> I cannot leave this out. Okay. We simply want to point out the challenges that this brings to women. And by the term women, okay, if this offends somebody, you know what? You need to be part of one of the podcasts on emotional maturity, emotional uh, intelligence, empathy. And, and communication and, and maybe some other things. I am referring to natural women. In the last few years, I, I can refer to the, the trans community as a whole, completely separately. Um, and, and we can do that. That's fine. But that is not the point of today's episode. But in the last few years, we've seen hyper growth in concerns about the inclusion of individuals who identify as women. Okay. As the, the, the trans community. And, and let me be clear. <laughs> this guy right here is not transphobic. Okay. I am putting it out there. That is not the case, but I am also very specific about who I talk about, when I talk about them, how I talk about them, okay? End of that part of the conversation. In the last few years, we've seen hyper growth in concerns about the inclusion of individuals who identify as women and of those individuals being allowed access into what were traditionally female-only spaces like restrooms, uh, locker rooms, onto sports teams, uh, even in institutional areas such as college dorm rooms, uh, it, prisons. Okay, and the fact is, these are this is not my research. This is hundreds of studies that have gone on out there, and in my experience. Many, many, many times I've been talked to about this concern, but there are millions of women that are expressing that this rising situation, it, it creates, um, it creates situations for them where they feel that their rights, their safety, and their privacy are being compromised. What happens when those situations occur? more stress, more anxiety, more depression, more fear. Many more of these concerns, which ultimately 
can result in mental health challenges or mental health concerns. So for these reasons, and for many more, it's important that we address these concerns, that we uphold the rights and the privacies of women, of each individual. And, and there's a study that was published in the Journal of Women's Health, and it discussed the implications of these recent societal changes. Uh, I don't know if that's how they worded it. That's how I'm wording it. But I mentioned earlier that these aren't my words. These are studies that I've come across. And this one was from the Journal of Women's Health. Okay, It highlighted the need for policies that protect the rights of all individuals while at the same time ensuring that the specific needs and the specific concerns of women, and again, I'm going to say natural women, are not overlooked. Okay, the conversations around this, they are evolving. And it's becoming clear that the unfettered inclusion is a recipe for disaster. Okay, because it diminishes what makes us special and within our own uniqueness, what makes women special and unique. Okay. It cannot be more important to consider the concerns of the loud few over the quiet many. It's important that we listen to and consider the women who feel impacted by these changes and, and, and by those advocating for, for more defined definitions of gender, of sexuality, and, and of inclusion. Okay, Until these things are figured out and until they're widely accepted, women will continue to face increasing challenges in the areas of mental health and wellness. To be honest, everyone will over this, that particular subject. That is the only reason I put that in today, to be honest, because it is, and, and I've heard it very, very um, aggressively, very bluntly in the last few months of fear. I mean, extreme fear from women, from girls, especially those getting ready to go into college when they're hearing that they're being forced to be put in rooms with someone that wasn't originally a woman, did not originally identify as a woman. They're, they're, they're scared, among other things. So I will digress on that or we will, we will move on from that. It is an important conversation to have though. Okay. So if that is you, if that is you, ladies, natural ladies, speak up, be willing to share that. It does not mean you are putting someone else down. It does not mean you are trying to deny someone else, their, deny their feelings, deny that they have certain rights that they have certain mental health concerns, but so do you. So speak up. All that said, what can we do? And I mean, back to the entire subject of mental health. First and foremost, recognizing the signs of mental health or mental health issues and understanding that seeking help is actually a sign of strength, not of weakness. Okay, these stigmas that are out there for everyone when it comes to mental health. Let me pause. I said this last week when, when we talked about men's mental health. Virtually every human on the planet deals with some form of mental health concern throughout their life. More than once, many times. If we look, and I'm talking personally, themselves, not someone they know, themselves. If we look at 
just saying we're affected by it because of people that we know, I, I would literally venture to, venture to say that it's every human on the planet. Now, some people will maybe argue with me on that point. Um, I don't know that either side could prove that, but the evidence is overwhelming um, that that would be the case. Look, there are tons of resources that are available. We can look at um, local mental health organizations. Most employer insurance offers something like that. And, and those organizations, they provide invaluable support. Okay. It, it's the resources that are available are, are just tremendous. Additionally, building support groups or communities, okay, whether that's through friends or family or, or some specific support group, okay, these, these things can make a world of difference in all aspects of our lives. Let's also not forget the power of self-care and of setting healthy boundaries in our lives. One of those boundaries should be when we start to feel that sense of overwhelm or, or something that's just going beyond what, what we think or recognize that it should be, even if we're doing that by comparing ourselves to others, if we see something that looks beyond what we feel it should be, or if someone tells us, hey, I've noticed this, then we should be able to go find help. And, and yes, I'm going to say this as a coach. Coaches are part of that support system. And I can tell you in my experience, I've, I've told dozens of people, you should probably go see somebody for that particular issue, a licensed therapist. And I want to point this out as well, too. Remember that discussing women's mental health concerns or mental health in general, it's not just a one-time conversation. It's an ongoing dialogue. Again, ladies, please, this is an ongoing dialogue. This is something you should be having conversations about, not just off the cuff with your friends. Okay. We all have a role to play in supporting the mental health and the well-being of the women in our lives. That goes for the ladies, that goes for the men. We all have a part to play. We should all start taking this more seriously and learning to recognize things in other people. So I want to thank you for joining me today on the Life Design Podcast and, and specifically on today's Mental Health Mondays episode. My wish for you is that you take care of yourself and that you take care of others. Please remember to share, to subscribe, and to engage. We truly do appreciate that. And the more you engage, the, the, the better content and material and, and the better information we can offer you and the people that you care about. And of course, the better chance you'll have of potentially being invited as a guest onto one of the episodes. And maybe for you, that would be a pretty cool thing. So I look forward to sharing more with you. I look forward to meeting many of you soon. And until then, live awesome and enjoy your journey.